Hello! In this video I'm going to look at more examples of Bryce being horrible to Melissa. As we saw in the last video, it's not just Bryce who's nasty to someone and as a result she becomes a victim. Melissa plays a role as well. For anyone who hasn't seen the last videos I made, this is about Married at First Sight, which is a TV show that matches people. Um, supposedly psychologists do the matching, although it's pretty dubious. It doesn't look like this is for the benefit of the people on the show. I think it's pretty obvious who Bryce is as a person. So it looks to me like they could see that this was the perfect nightmare to match these two together. So why would they do that if it wasn't just for ratings? Married at First Sight thought it would be a great idea to tell the people on their show that they must tell their new partner something really personal about themselves that's secret and that they haven't told anybody else. So this is another example of just how much they want these couples to work because of course if you do that what could possibly go wrong? Okay. We get sweaty palms. That's the so, so sweaty palms. <laughs> You'll be right. I'm very uh, intrigued to hear what you've got to say. Okay. <clears throat> There's something we haven't spoken about, really. <clears throat> Melissa is really stressed. You can see how nervous she is of having to tell Bryce this terrible secret. She's obviously really uncomfortable with the whole thing, and yet she's feeling forced into doing this. But even with this crazy show she's in, and these producers who are only interested in ratings and don't care about her mental health, she does have a choice. She doesn't have to tell Bryce the most sensitive piece of information. I regret allowing my past relationship to continue to prevent me from moving forward in my 20s. My ex and I never, ever got back together. However, over the years, he's remained a friend. And we've been intimate. She could do what another contestant did on the show and just say that the secret is she really likes her partner. That worked out really well for them. It brought them closer. The partner found it really endearing. She could have done the same thing. But instead she picks something that she already feels really ashamed of and thinks somehow that she owes it to Bryce to tell him about it. How long did that actually go for? Up until a year ago. So for 12 years, you've kept him there? Sometimes people disclose too much personal stuff about themselves before there's been time to develop trust in a relationship. And that's because they find the idea of being rejected by the other person so intolerable that they need to get it over and done with now, right at the start, if that's what's going to happen. So they tell somebody all of this stuff about themselves that they think might be off-putting and they need the other person to say, don't worry, it's okay, I still like you. But the problem with that is that it can push the other person away because it's a red flag. Trust hasn't developed yet and yet you're burdening the other person with all of this personal information and you're expecting to get something back from them. You're expecting their approval or, or if you're not expecting it, you're hoping for it. So that puts a lot of pressure on the other person and it's not a good sign if somebody does that to you. They're not acknowledging your boundaries. They're not acknowledging your personal space and how much more is this going to happen in the relationship where they expect you to play this role of making them feel okay about themselves. Is it going to be an equal relationship? Are you going to be able to form a real connection with this person or will they always want too much from you? So I think the kind of person who would be fine with fulfilling this role is either somebody who's used to having their boundaries ignored, so maybe someone who themselves has been in an abusive relationship before, or somebody who wants to take advantage of having so much power, which I think fits with Bryce's character. Up until a year ago. 
So for 12 years, you've kept him there. It's interesting the way Bryce phrases this, you've kept him there, as if she's been in full control, as if she's somehow been abusing her power. And that's interesting because as we'll find out, that's not what's happened. Narcissists often project the way they behave onto other people. If this has happened for 12 years, it says that there's still feelings there, too, big or small, regardless. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'd agree. And then that's why you haven't met someone, because I mean, those feelings were still there for 12 years. Like, has he not had a girlfriend or something in that time, or...? He was married. This gives us an idea of the kind of guy Melissa goes for. So she's gone from one really narcissistic person to another. He cheated on his wife and he lied to Melissa about it. So for 12 years, Melissa was entangled with this guy who didn't respect her. He was married. I didn't realise he was married at the time. He didn't tell me. Did it happen while he was married? I think so. I didn't know. <laughs> it's kind of like, what the Bryce is now using this information against Melissa. And that's something that a narcissist can do as well, which is another reason why you shouldn't disclose a lot of personal information early on in a relationship, because it can be used against you. And, uh, and so in this case, that's what Bryce is doing. He's taking what she said and he's twisting it. So he's behaving as if Melissa was aware that her ex was married. So he's doing the same thing now as he did before when he said that she was keeping him there. In fact, her ex was keeping her there because he was married to somebody else and he was still keeping her in his life. So again, it seems that Bryce is projecting the way that he behaves onto Melissa. This is another amazing task they've been given to really strengthen their relationship. They've been told to stare into each other's eyes regardless of whether they're ready to do that or not to create this moment of intimacy without having already built lots of trust. This is like a game show. They're losers if they don't manage to make an impossible situation work. The fact that he's never really liked my eye colour. This should be a very interesting task. Do you like this? <laughs> it is on. now. You can get closer, oh. come on. <laughs> there we go, there we go, that's more comfortable. Are they finally going to achieve intimacy? Is this task going to bring them closer? How long did I give you this? <laughs> <laughs> Just like that. I haven't felt that close to Bryce the whole time until that moment. Yeah, I can't describe it. It just made me realise how much I like him. So Melissa's feeling really close to Bryce. Is it mutual? Is that how he's feeling too? Because it looks like it from the footage. I don't think I've ever done anything like this before. <laughs> I know that. It's, it's weird, you never just stare into someone's eyes and just keep staring and staring. Mm, I feel comfortable. It's kind of nice. Mm. I didn't want to go anywhere else. I was like quite happy sitting there. You don't keep looking at me didn't hear anything, I was sort of just staring smack back into those eyes and uh, they're not that bad after all. So it seems like they've been feeling really close, Melissa's going to bed feeling like they've turned a corner and then this happens. You got so close you actually noticed my eye colour. Yeah, I know. Mm. See, I'm getting close to you. Yeah. They look different at night though. Mm. Do they change colour? I think Bryce doesn't realise that what he's saying can be hurtful to me. Really? Does he really not know he can be hurtful? Yeah. They look different at night, though. Mm. Do they change colour? In 
some cases, narcissists don't know that they're being hurtful because they're so preoccupied with their own feelings and they're so entitled that they think it's fine to treat people in that way. And they don't even think about how the other person's feeling. They can have jealous feelings, they can have contemptuous feelings, and they express them without thinking of what effect that's gonna have on the other person because they're so caught up in those feelings. But that doesn't make it okay. Why are they having those feelings in the first place? In almost all cases, a narcissist knows they're being hurtful and they do it intentionally because they want an emotional reaction. That's what they thrive off. They need narcissistic supply. So they're either gonna get it from people being in awe of them and thinking they're amazing, or from people getting hurt or upset or angry because of their behavior. Either way, they feel like they're having power over someone. So in this case, what's happened is things have gone from being really close and intimate and suddenly there's been this turnaround. And I think that's what Bryce is getting off on. I think that was very intentional that he picked this moment to behave like that. And it's a common tactic that a narcissist will get bored easily. You know, if everything's getting really nice and intimate, they get bored and they want to sabotage it. So they want to push the other person away. And that's often because they can't actually cope with real intimacy. It's very threatening because they're not able to rely on somebody loving them for themselves. They're always thinking about how they can prove themselves to people and how they can always be the winner, you know, always be the most in control and the most powerful in any situation. So that doesn't allow for intimacy because it means they can't be vulnerable. They can't get genuinely close to another person. So he's gone from reeling Melissa in, making her feel really good about herself and reassured so that she can feel everything she feels towards him and he can get this big dose of um, adoration from her but then it gets to the point where it might develop into real intimacy that's dangerous so now he switches tactic and instead he makes her feel bad again he still gets the same good feeling he still gets to feel powerful and like he matters to her if you've noticed this happening to you, that you're getting really intimate with somebody, things are really lovely, you feel really close to them, and then suddenly they say something spiteful, it doesn't tend to be a mistake. It tends to be very intentional. It keeps a narcissist in their comfort zone. Just when they might risk actually being vulnerable, they get to stay in control and they get to still feel powerful. So a narcissist keeps people on this roller coaster of being adored, feeling safe, and then suddenly being discarded and degraded. I'm definitely warming to her eye colour. There's still part of it does like the blue eyes. You can't get rid of that straight away. but. Oh, the green eyes aren't that bad. They're not a deal breaker, are they? I don't think so. You don't think so? He delivers the second blow and look how carefully he watches her reaction. He can see that he's having a big effect on her. They're not a deal breaker, are they? I don't think so. You don't think so? So what? If I don't have blue eyes, he's not ever gonna like me? It reminds me of a little kid, how they might do something and then watch your reaction. They're just staring at your face really obviously because they want to see you react, you know. Um, they're still learning about the effect they can have on somebody. And a narcissist is stuck in childhood. They haven't developed emotionally. And so they still have the same behaviors as little kids. Unfortunately, it's not cute though. They're not a deal breaker, are they? I don't think so. You don't think so? Well, like, I'm not so judgmental on the, the blue eyes now. I guess it's good that he likes me for my personality and not my looks. I said I'm not starting to like it. That was a pretty good answer for her. I think she's just trying to big it up. Just hit the lights. Right.
In the next video, I'm going to look at fidelity and uh, and in this case, what seems to be infidelity. It looks like Bryce has been cheating on Melissa. So we look at the rumours, you know, who's saying what and at how Bryce responds to it and how Melissa responds to it. So there's quite a lot to look at in that video. So I'm going to leave it here. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.